Hiya, I'm Pimmy and today I am not sitting in the yurt but in my bathroom because I am going to show um, the next part of washing um, a fleece and um, this time I'm ready to um, get the grease out so I am going to use uh, hot water and soap and um, there are a couple of things that uh, I use that I want to show. Um, I misused my bathtub um, as a washing station and uh, to make sure that I don't get any stray wool going down the drain I have um, one of these thingies, a hair catcher uh, uh, thing for the for the drain and um, I have a colander that I use uh, to um, uh, put the, the uh, washed wool in um, and um, I am going to fill um, a big tub with uh, hot water and add something to um, dissolve the, um, the the grease the lanolin with and in this case i am going to use some dish soap and uh it, yeah uh, i i don't have anything that is as good at um uh decreasing but still um, uh, gentle enough um, for uh, the, the fleece but if, if I would use um, something like this um, a, a wool wash um, liquid then uh, it wouldn't dissolve the, the grease enough sorry hold on I have helpful cats here trying to eat uh, the wool which they shouldn't um, sorry and uh, the other thing I wanted to show is something that you should not ever use with um, uh, a protein um, more cats sorry uh, uh, that you should never use uh, on, a, on a protein fiber uh, which in Holland is this stuff, Biotex uh, and it's fabulous for getting uh, stains out of your clothes uh, or out of any cloth uh, especially um, uh, uh, protein based dirt like um, uh, like blood or um, uh, uh, yeah sweat and, and sweat stains and blood stains because it uh, has see I don't have it in English on here but I very much doubt it uh, is sold um, neither England or America but uh, for Holland um, there's enzymes in in here that will break down the, uh, the proteins and um, a protein based fiber will also be broken down so if you use Biotex or another um, washing powder uh, that contains enzymes it's going to work fabulous on um, uh, on blood or uh, other dirt coming from your body but um, if you leave um, wool in it for long enough it will completely dissolve the wool fibers if you only use it for a short wash and you don't let it soak for a, a day or two or even a half hour then um, you won't notice the change as fast and the damage the enzymes do to the fiber but they still do damage and um, they make the wool hard and crunchy and if you 
Um, I, I, I know uh, one of the reenactors, uh, I know um, he used to wash his uh, uh, woolen um, pants, his woolen breeches uh, with um, Beatex and um, they became so hard that he was able to just set them up and they would stand on, on themselves uh, because the wool had been damaged so much that any elasticity um, and, and softness had gone out of the wool. Um, yes, um, I'm going to uh, make my soap and then I'm going to show you some more. Right, so I have my soapy water. And um, I used uh, the water as hot as the, the tap will um, uh, provide me with. And um, I only added the, the soap um, after the water had stopped run running. Now I'm going to add the wool because if I would add water to the wool instead of the wool to the water, then uh, the pressure of... An, uh, yeah, the, the, the water hitting the wool would be able to felt um, uh, my wool because this is a very um, easy to felt type of wool. Shetland uh, will felt very easily. And um, If you are washing wool, then you have two thirds of uh, what you need to make felt. Uh, the free being um, uh, warmth, uh, soap and agitation. So um, I have plenty of water in this bucket. And uh, that is going to... Um, Make sure that I don't rub the, um, uh, the the wool together. That it's going to float in the soapy water, and that's going to uh, help not felt it. Um, agitation. Uh, I'm going to be careful not to stir or to scrub or um, bounce around the the wool. I am using a plunger to. Um, press the, the wool down and to gently move uh, the soapy water a bit because the water is too hot for me to uh, just stick my hands in and, and um, I could use thick um, uh, kitchen gloves but um, uh, instead I, I use a plunger. Um, Next thing is that I'm going to let this sit for a bit uh, to let the, the um, heat and the soap do their work on dissolving dirt and um, uh, lanolin. But I am not going to let to allow the wool to sit in uh, this water till it. Uh, is um, uh, till the water uh, cools down because uh, the partially dissolved um, lanolin will rise to the top of the, the bucket and um, solidify again if uh, I allow the, the water to cool. So I'm going to take the, the wool out before uh, it cools down in the water. And um, That'll be next. So the next step is that I'm going to put the, the warm wet wool in the colander. So it'll drain out um, a bit of the uh, dirty water and I can put it in um, the spin dryer to um, um, yeah, spin out uh, the rest of the dirty water. So that's next. And another helpful kitten. Now next my um, wool is going to go in one of these. An old spin dryer. Um, and this is 
not as much as of a problem as you'd think um, if you um, put wool in the spin cycle of a washing machine um, it's not going to just spin in one direction it's going to uh, spin one way around and then stop and spin the other way around and it's the stop and uh, turn point that is going to felt your wool this one is only going to spin in one direction really fast uh, so there's no problem and no risk of felting I am going to stick uh, a tea towel on top because um, otherwise the wall will try to climb up the walls while it spins and um, go over the go over the edge. Sorry for the bang. Um, now this this is going to take out um, uh, all the the dirty soapy water, and then afterwards I am going to. Um, put it in a, a, a rinse bath. As you could see, that was a whole lot of dirty water coming out, and um, using the spin dryer. Uh, mix that I don't have to um, uh, rinse the wool uh, more than once because most of the dirt has come out with the water and um, I only want to uh, rinse, rinse out last bit of dirt and um, the last bit of soap. Um, now you could uh, instead of doing just one um, uh, bath with a uh, soap you could do two or three uh, depending on the, the type of fleece you are uh, cleaning and how um, much lanolin it has uh, mine is a, a primitive breed and those don't usually have as much uh, lanolin as uh, something that's uh, uh, a merino or merino cross, uh, which are much much greasier and, and um, have the yeah the really sticky lanolin that uh, is going to take several uh, baths to get out of the fleece. Um, I am going to add uh, a bit of just plain white vinegar. You could also. Um, Put a bit of uh, cleaning vinegar uh, in, uh, in this um, uh, water, uh, but it's going to neutralize uh, the last traces of soap. If you don't uh, rinse out the, the last traces of soap, then uh, your wool um, can, especially lighter colored wool, can be um, damaged and turn yellow, and it's not a a stain that uh, you're going to get out. Um, there's another thing I wanted to say. Oh yeah, um, the water in the bucket in the in the grey bucket is um, still warm, hot-ish, uh, because I have um, used hot water on the fleece. Uh, so I want to gradually go back um, in heat. If I go too fast, then the uh, scales of the, the hairs of the wool, uh, which have all opened um, during the washing and the, because of the, the heat of the, the water, um, will clamp down and it'll get a, a shock from the cold and um, everything will pull together and you will felt the wool. So, um, hot-ish water it is. And uh, after that I am going to um, 
uh, give it another spin in the uh, spin dryer and um, then I have my wool ready to uh, put it outside for drying. But that's the next step and um, that's the next video. So I hope this was helpful and um, hope to see you next time. Bye!